Basically, my father was a violinist and uh, he wanted me to learn vocal. My mother was a singer, so all of a sudden, when I was very small, I think two or three years old, I had diphtheria. So they thought and they believed that I will lose my voice, so I cannot sing. So they introduced me to different instruments. But when I was introduced to violin, I really loved it because my father was my idol at the time. So I wanted to bother play violin like my father become a musician like my father. My father used to say, if you get a chance to listen to many men, when you go there, go and listen to these people, and if you're going to play Indian classical for only Indian audience, then you are wasting your life. Come back and you can, there are more audiences here. Unless you can change the violin and bring it to international level, where we have our own people. Not only our own people, also it comes to the mainstream where people start respecting Indian violin as a main, main instrument. So he told me, go and listen to many men, Krapilli and people like that. So ultimately when I started working with this great artist and recording and performing, that was almost a dream come true. for quite some time. Taking, I used to call the fusion I used to do early, late 70s, uh, early 70s and things like that, neo-fusion, which normally those times the fusion meant jazz rock fusion. Because people who were playing a lot of jazz tried to take some of the rock pop elements so they could cross over to a wider audience. But at that time doing fusion, taking some of the classical elements from different traditions, particularly Western classical tradition, because I was doing a masters in Western classical music. I wanted to write for orchestras, for operas and things like that. Then later on, I got involved in different music. Uh, at that time, it was called world music. Even now, they call it world music. Even though I don't like the term world music, because whenever one talks about world geography, history, and things like that, they, they read the entire world's history and geography. When it comes to music, world meant everything other than Western classical music. So I thought of creating something and my late wife, she was into a lot of uh, different uh, cultures and things like that. She studies African and Indonesian music. So we wanted to think taking uh, music and musicians from different continents and almost to a musical journey around the globe. So the concept started like that. Then when I did the Global Fusion album, I took the artists from different continents. In fact, the title track called Jay Hanuman, the Indonesian monkey chant, which is a very traditional thing. And also we have the African uh, percussion from Mali and didgeridoo from Australia and the simple conch of Indian tradition with Indian tonalities and orchestration. And so the whole Global Fusion started like something differently to approach and convey a message to the entire globe through music, peace and love and affection and uh, harmony through music.
And for that, I was looking for different uh, vocalists and different artists, uh, different international, of, uh, so that we can communicate in a one in a simpler level and also in another intellectual level where it is giving something to the intellectuals. So it's not only a common music appreciated by a commoner, but it is in a different layers where everybody has some way, some technical uh, complexity and also some intellectual thoughts and thought processes are involved in composing, writing the music. So when I was selecting different artists for voice, I selected Ravitaji because uh, at that time I was really looking for a vocalist who can have a very versatile voice and very different emotion for different things and also contribute as a soloist, as a featured soloist, not just uh, singing given lines or so. But that's how we met. Is it okay, sir?